Hey everyone, thanks so much for coming back again to, for another Saber review. Today I'm going to be bringing you something uh, a little special. These are two lightsabers that were made by my sons at the Savi Workshop in Disneyland at their Galaxy's Edge. Uh, we went there on a vacation recently. I just did a review on the Luke Skywalker Legacy Hilt from Return of the Jedi. Uh, that was my present to myself. And uh, for my boys, I wanted them to have an experience at, uh, at Batu, so I ended up signing them both up for the Savi Workshop. And that was uh, an interesting experience. So for those of you who have not done it and who want to get an idea of what it's like, if you are going to either Disneyland or Disney World down in Orlando at uh, Savi's Workshop in, uh, in Galaxy's Edge, you have to go online or use your Disney app and go into your experiences and you want to look up the events that you can sign up for in advance and if you can find you should be able to find the Savi's workshop in there um, I scheduled mine a about a month or so in advance and I don't know if you can do it the day of you might be able to if there are spots available it's about a 20 to 25 minute event that occurs um, but once you book it they kind of like hold your credit card as like a reservation pretty much and then they don't charge you to you actually go to the event uh, I think there is a cancellation fee so just be be wary of that if you decide to sign up and then don't make it so just kind of look that over um, my two boys are 10 and 8 and I surprised them with this so we go and we check in with the crew we go down there there was probably about a we were the first ones there. I think there was a small crowd that, that gathered afterwards of maybe about, I don't know, maybe not even not even 10 participants that were building lightsabers that day. It's a, it's a pretty good size shop. You could probably fit at least, I would say 20 people if, you, if they really wanted to. Um, I'll try and post some pictures with this throughout the, throughout the video. But um, I, found, I actually found it really funny. My two boys, I think, were the youngest there out of out of everybody, and we were definitely the first ones there. And the little they basically escort you to like this little like side area where you kind of have to wait for the the class ahead of you to finish up. And um, the doors finally open up, and when I tell you that the people that were old, like much older than my sons, kind of like jumped in front of them, like they were waiting for a ride. I was like, really? You're going to jump in front of the two youngest kids here to beat them into the room? Like, everyone's getting a lightsaber. Like, everyone at this point, you you the whole procedure is you go up to the kiosk when you first get there and you sign in. And they put these four diagrams in front of you. And the four diagrams basically show you the different lightsaber constructions that you can make based on the... Um, the style that you will that you want to go with um, my one son went for power and control my other one went for peace and justice there are two others uh, one has to do with nature and I forget the other one um, sorry uh, it's late and I cannot remember what it is but they have them all listed there um, but basically it's a uh, it's different combinations you have two choices for an emitter you have uh, two choices for an upper body. I think you only have one choice for the switch. I think you have two choices, or maybe you might have actually two choices for the switch. I'm not sure. I think I can't remember. Two choices for the lower body, and then two choices for a pommel. So kind of nice. You actually do have options to kind of go with to mix and match what you want to, how you want to dress yours up. Uh, they do a really nice presentation with a kind of like the like a head crew member if you will who's I guess supposed to be almost like the lead Jedi who kind of like walks you through the whole process and gives you the whole lore about lightsabers and um, and how they're the ancient weapon of the Jedi or Sith and then they have workers that kind of go around they put the trays out in front of you and like step by step you start to build your saber um, I kind of stood behind my boys and kind of just watched them go through it you know, if they struggled, you can kind of jump in there and help them out, kind of putting some of the pieces together. They do have workers that are going around to help them. So, like, if you're doing this for your young kids, you know, don't worry. Like, there are people that are there to kind of help get them through this. 
Um, there was a really cool ceremony where you got to pick out your crystal. So you don't that you they don't just put the crystal on your tray. They have this presentation box, if you will, that they kind of go around with, and it has a number of different colored crystals. The ones that we had options for were red, green, blue, purple. Um, I think there was a like a goldish yellow, I think, that was there. And you can basically, you pick it out. So my, my one son chose green, my other son chose blue. And one of the first things they show you is they show you this, this chassis. So I took apart my, my oldest son's, his, his upper half, to kind of show you like, so this is the chassis part right here, okay? This is part of it. And then it also goes down all the way through here. So this is a switch section, okay? And in here, this is where the crystal is housed. And as you can see, the crystal identifies what color to light up um, on the inside. So you can actually pick and choose different crystals. And if you wanted to switch it out, you can, if you want to take all this off um, and unscrew everything, you absolutely can do that. Um, speaker of course is down here. This particular pommel has a, uh, has a D ring. All right. So one of the, this is one of the pieces here. So you got to like really push down and get the, and, and twist to get this to stay on. And then this upper portion here kind of just slides. Just twists like normal. And then eventually you're just gonna twist until everything lines up. I gotta say the clocking of this, of these weren't that bad. They were actually done pretty well. I thought these things were gonna like look all out of alignment, but when you do it right, and you can twist them both ways, like what's nice here is like you're spinning this way, you're spinning this one way, you're spinning this one the other. So if you just kind of like grip and twist, they should lock into place. All right, so that's all set up. Now, if you try to switch it on without the blade in there, you get this noise and it's basically telling you that there's no blade connected. So it's almost got like a blade ID. This does use pogo connectors. So let's see if we can get this inside there. There we go. So pretty interesting that they are using kind of the lightsaber technology that we are when it comes to our blades and to what we use in the lightsaber community. As you can tell, as you can see, these things are very, very fat. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to get one of my hilts right now and just to kind of show off the difference. Okay. So just so you can see a size comparison. Okay. I don't know how well the camera is going to end up picking this up, but no, it's not going to pick it up well at all. All right. So here, I want you to take a look at these two. Now, obviously, these are two different style builds, but this is from the Custom Saber Shop, all these parts that I purchased. Look how thin that, that is, and look how thick the one from Galaxy's Edge is. Okay. All of their hilts are like this. They're all thick. Even the Legacy hilts, a lot of the Legacy, legacy hilts are very thick. Um, I will say that it is very heavy. Like when you when you finish building this thing, this it, it does weigh quite a bit. It weighs a lot more. I would say at least it's double the weight of my custom hilt right here that I that I've made. So um, that it, it definitely. I mean, you could club somebody with this thing if you really wanted to, but. Um, it is real metal. I, I get a lot of there's people that I've seen ask are they, are they plastic or metal. It is metal. I, I'm not sure what type of metal, but it is metal. And these guys use, there's no set screws in this. This is a, a J locking system. So here are their blades. This is a, they give you a 31 inch blade when you sign up. The, price, the overall price for this obvious workshop, um, it's just over 200 bucks, I want to say, for each person. Um, and each, if you're doing this with young kids, um, they are, you are allowed like one spotter, they call it behind the person that's building, um, for each, uh, for each participant. So as you can see here, they have these little lock keys right here. There's a small one and then there's a large one. And then that coincides with the emitter. Okay. So inside the emitter, you can see there's a, a large channel and a small channel down here. So once you line those up, push all the way down, and then it's basically push and twist, okay? And then it locks in, okay? And now the two pogo, the pogo connectors hit the, uh, 
hit the PCB, and now it's all set up, okay? Same thing with this one. This is my other sons. So kind of almost like an Obi-Wan feel, right? With this, this style. Uh, a little like, almost like a clamp card here as for activation. Grip section here. And there's the inside. Underneath, it's almost like a like an eye, almost like a. I guess it's supposed to be almost like a glass eye, and then this one has a cover tack on it. Then here's the vented pommel. Okay, same thing with this. We're going to look for the small channel and the large channel to put the blade in. These these are a snug fit. I even think I popped off. Yeah, I did pop off. My sons were playing with these earlier today, so these are not as snug as they should have been. They they do unscrew a little easily, more easily than I would have thought. Um, both times I think my sons have had to kind of like bring them over to me to tighten them up, or they'll I'll see them tighten them up after they're playing with them for a little bit. So I don't know like if when they're like gripping or holding them, they're kind of twisting as well. But um, so you get 31 inch blades. You get one blade each with with each purchase. Um, and these are typically around like are they like 35 or 40 for each blade like if you were to buy them separately um, at the antique donks uh, antique shop or docks donks antique shop that's right next door it was a very fun experience once they they go through this whole story over this this 20 minutes as you're building the lightsaber this guy's going giving this explanation, starts talking about Jedi like Luke and Yoda, Obi-Wan, Rey, uh, talks about different Sith Lords. Uh, and then eventually, like, you know, Yoda comes on and Yoda talks to you as if, like, you were some youngling um, making your lightsaber for the first time. And it's a really cute experience. If you if you have young kids and you can, you can swing it, um, I highly recommend doing it at least once. I think they'll get a kick out of it. They get to have their own lightsaber that they made um, granted it is not the the technology or the quality of the hilts that typically we're used to in the lightsaber community but as far as an experience goes it's a really fun experience you know to see their the look on their faces when they not only put everything together but when they actually get to turn it on for the first time um, that was great you know and I was happy I was able to kind of get that on on film and, and pictures of that um, it just seemed like everybody like around you kind of like enjoying the whole experience. Um, it was great. And then at the very end, they give you this big giant, uh, Jedi carry bag almost that you get to kind of put your, your blade and your, your hilt into. We ended up shipping everything back from LA to New York. Just made things a lot easier than not having to deal with it on the plane. Uh, and it was very reasonable to do that. And, um, they have people there that that set that that set that up for you. You just basically you take it to one of the uh, the droid workshop and they ship everything out. It's re they make it a real simple, quick, and easy process. Um, so with that, I'm just going to kind of show you how you know. Obviously, <laughs> not that I'm show you how to do it, but basically what will end up happening at the end. So the very last thing that they do is they all light up the blades together as the as the final part of the ceremony. So uh, my one son, his this should be blue. Okay. All right, no, there's no smooth swing or anything. Has has some recognition of that, but this does have a little, like a little yellow, like a little yellow flash on clash. Not, but not incredibly responsive, but you can, uh, you do get a little color out of it, which is nice. It's not just a, a flash of white. Here's my son's green. Like, look, see, not it's not that responsive. And I'm actually, I'm giving this a good hit. There you go. Yeah, so it's not that sensitive. Uh, it does have the scrolling effect. Um, I'm pretty sure that these are uh, their their new Neo Pixel blades. The um, I'm gonna take this out just so I can show you guys a little bit more. So the blade itself, right, you can see here the connectors here that the pogo pins go into on inside the hilt. 
The blade is glued. It's got a glued tip at the top. Um, but the, the PC, the NeoPixels do not go all the way to the tip. They go just to like the top of the blade. So the top, you know, if it's not lit out, th this top, it reflects the light from inside, but it doesn't really light up like the rest of the, the blade does, especially not like the way that the, the blades in our community does. Uh, but this is, they do say it's a polycarbonate blade. Um, it doesn't feel as sturdy as ours, as the ones that we use. But overall, like I think it definitely gets the job done. Uh, I was reading, I just did a review on my uh, my Luke Hilt. And on that, it's a, that one has a 36 inch blade that I purchased for it. And it said like, you know, you can do some like light dueling with it. I, I looked that up just to kind of confirm that. And it does say that you can do it. Um, I don't know how hard it, my kids played with these for the last couple of days since, um, since they arrived. And uh, they've done some just some light light dueling, and they've been able to keep you know they take those hits. But I wouldn't I wouldn't think I wouldn't hit one of these blades against one of our blades because I feel like then this might get damaged. But overall, this was a really fun experience. <laughs> you know, if you're looking to just build a hilt, build a lightsaber in Disney. It can be a lot of fun, especially if you're doing it with uh, with young kids who have never built anything before. If you're someone in the community that is used to high quality hilts and the technology that we have, um, if you're looking for that same type of experience, that's you're probably not going to get what you're looking for. If you're looking to just build a fun lightsaber in Disney and say that it's yours, yeah, you're you'll have fun with that. But like, don't expect to get something as thin and as custom as this because uh, that's not that's not what they're doing at least not yet i don't know what the future will bring uh, what how the technology will change for them hopefully their smiltable their hilts will get smaller um they, like i said they they are heavy like the the chassis in these things are really long but it's uh these are they are fun to you know to play with. They, they, my my kids have had a really fun time using these and swinging them around. So, like I said, if you can if you can swing it, I think it's a great experience to probably do once. Uh, I'm glad that my sons were able to do it. If I didn't have kids, I probably would have gotten one for myself. Um, but just seeing the look on their faces doing it was enough for me. And that's really about it. The other thing that they have that is amazing are they have Jedi robes at Disney. They have a brown one and they have a black one. And I have to tell you, it is an incredible buy. Um, I didn't think I was gonna actually get one of these things, but I did. And it is pretty incredible. It is a very nice quality. And again, the workers there are really, really great because I, I picked one out like my typical size of what I thought I was. And the woman was like, no, 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 no. She's like, you need this thing to like basically go to the floor. She's like, don't worry about the sleeves. They're going to be oversized no matter what. So here's the sleeve. But she says, you want this, you want the bottom of this thing almost touching the ground. I like, cut like past your ankles. And I'm like, oh, OK. I did not know that. But this was really cool. I like it a lot. Um, this I also shipped back as well. So anything you basically buy, I think, in um, in Batu, if you don't want to bring it with you, you can ship it out, which I think is uh, a great option for those people that are already packed to the gills. If you're like me with my family, our suitcases were packed to capacity just going on the trip, let alone buying everything there and having to bring it home. That would have been almost impossible. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's about it. Um, if you are looking to go to Disneyland or Disney World and anytime soon and you have not been to Galaxy's Edge yet, take your time. There's a lot to see. There are a ton of different ships. Um, there's a lot of people walking around, some that are in costume from the movies. Um, there's tons of crew that are the, the Disney crew that work there that, that go around. Um, there's different things to try. We tried, there's blue and green milk. You can try that. It's like a slushy almost. The blue one I thought was tastier than the green one. What else did they have there? 
different shops to go into. You can eat different things. The two main rides, of, of course, is Rise of the Resistance, which really was amazing. The Falcon Run, uh, which was a, a great, great ride. You'll see the animatronics of Hondo, and I think just um, it's so well done. Very lifelike. And the Rise of the Resistance ride was just, it was really well worth it. It seems like it's a long wait. Just get on it and go. It's amazing. It, it really is a great experience. So, guys, with that, that was my uh, my Disney's Edge experience with my family and my kids. Uh, it's something that I hope you guys all get to enjoy at some point in time. Any comments or questions about these hilts in particular and what the you know if the, what to expect going into somebody's workshop, by all means, ask away. I will do my best to answer all those questions. And uh, that's about it, guys. All right. Take care. Talk to you guys soon.